now that we uh, had our shameless plugs, we can go on to the fight. You know, this is something that, you know, months ago we talked about with Francis Ngannou when he didn't sign with the UFC uh, and he had mentioned he wants to go on and do boxing. I don't want to sign this contract with UFC because they don't want to let me do the other things that I want to do. And when, you mean you mean when Francis fumbled the bag, like everybody was saying? Everybody was saying he fumbled the bag, and then Dana White's coming on saying like, you know, I don't think what I don't know what he's what he's thinking. He's thinking he's going to go out there and make all this money and put on all these events. It's just <laughs> not going to happen, right? And, he doesn't want to fight the tough fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, you know, we offered him so, some fights. We offered to pay him more than anybody's ever made in the UFC, which, in cool. I have no doubt in my mind that he was mm-hmm. offered. The highest contract that anybody's been offered in the UFC. True. But it didn't come remotely close to what Francis could make outside of the UFC. And this is the point that Francis yeah. was trying to make, right? Well, it wasn't was even saying, just pay me that. what I'm worth. Well, it wasn't even just that. It wasn't even just pay me what I'm worth. It was like all these other things that he was asking for outside of just paycheck that the UFC refused to even acknowledge in the in the you mean like fighter health care? Yeah, like a bunch of stuff that he was like you know, guaranteed purses for his opponents, like all these other other things that he was looking to get some of it, not all of it. And the fact that the UFC didn't even acknowledge those requests, he was like, cool, you guys aren't even negotiating some would with call me, it then I'm just going to leave. An unselfish act. Yeah. By Francis truly. Ngannou. You know? Yeah. And then everybody came with their pitchforks at him and were like, all he cares about is money. He doesn't want to, he's ducking John Jones. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, come on, dude. It, Overweight, it slow. <laughs> In, in hindsight, right, like anybody that was like, he's scared of John Jones, he's stuck in John Jones. And then he goes yeah. into the ring, first boxing match ever against what some consider to be one of the best heavyweights of all time. Definitely the yeah. best heavyweight of our generation. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and that's his first boxing match. Like, who is this guy scared? He's not scared of anybody, dude. Yeah. He's not but it's, ducking anybody. And it's funny because like, I think we've talked about it before, but like the goalposts like move and move and move. And it's like, oh, but but Tyson Fury's never going to fight him. He baited him. And then they sign the fight. And then it's, yeah, but it's just an exhibition. There's not going to be any knockdowns. There's a no knockdown rule. And it's like, what? And then and then they take that out. And it's actually a sanctioned bout. It actually goes on their pro records. And it's like, it, it always, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see what people are saying now. But from what I've seen, everybody's giving them credit now, which is fucking awesome. Will, I don't know if you remember, but when that news first came out, we hopped online. We made a video. And, you know, we don't have it queued up or anything like that, but we went on record saying this was a great move by Francis Ngannou. He didn't fumble the bag. If anything, UFC are the ones that yeah. lost out by losing out on Francis Ngannou, a generational athlete. This guy walks out chiseled. He's yeah. super powerful, holds a world record for the hardest punch uh, recorded by man. Uh, you know, they were saying that like getting punched by Francis and God, who's getting hit by a Ford Escort driving like 60 yeah. miles an hour or something like that, dude. No, Ford top Escort's... speed. Which uh, is top speed. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, either way, right? Like th- there's just so many things about Francis and Ghana that draw you in, mm-hmm. including his, his story, you know, what he had to go through growing up in the sand mines in huts and then, you know, sneaking his way into, uh, into France and finding his Multiple way into the UFC. Dude, it's you just know. an amazing story. So how can you not root for the guy? Yeah, he, he tells a story of like falling into that razor wire. And it's like you either – you don't want to move because it's going to tear you up. But if you <sighs> don't move, the guards are coming and they're literally going to kill you. So you have to climb your way out of razor wire just tearing up your body and then go back and try again in like six months or something. Like it's just insane the stuff that he's overcome. And it's just like so inspiring and it's everything that combat sports – excels at it's the stuff you don't get in other sports because this is a guy doesn't matter where you come from doesn't matter what you've gone through it doesn't matter if you were had the silver spoon the whole time none of that matters once you're in there and like it's just you versus one other person and that's when you get to prove doubters wrong and you get to do something for yourself and frankly the ufc was holding him back from that you know what i mean this is he he had uh, an attempt at another echelon of greatness uh last yeah. night and the UFC was trying to block him from even attempting that. That's that's. Yeah, I love the post fight interview where the guy said, "Francis and Gondo, you dared to be great." Yeah. And he started off with that, and I was like, "Dude, that is so good." All right, but let's before we get into yeah, let's the, get, the post fight interview, let's go ahead and get yeah. into the, the. We just skipped the fight. I'm, I'm going to say the event, the event yeah. itself, right? Because it, it wasn't just the boxing match; it was a whole thing. It was a pretty Concert. big deal, dude. So first off, 
Look at this poster. Yeah, so sick, dude. It's so oh my good. God. I, and I think I texted you, this gives me 300 vibes, right? Yeah. With like the dark uh, contrast and the, the the gold popping out, dude. It's just so it's good. It's really and, well done. Uh, Battle of the Baddest, yeah. I was down with that. Yeah, Rich, Rich wasn't too stoked on it, but also it Wait, is. What? The, the, <laughs> Hold the on. The heavyweight, he's like, they went with Battle of the Baddest? <laughs> oh, my but, God. But with context, you know, that's what they always call the heavyweight champ. Baddest man on the planet. And this is the lineal heavyweight boxing champion of the world versus the UFC heavyweight champion. He walked away with the belt. He is he was he never lost his belt. The UFC heavyweight champion of the world versus the lineal heavyweight boxing champion. That's the baddest man on the planet. These these two right here. And no one can deny that. Dude, and it, oh my God, the fight was so good. It lived up to it, right? But yes, really amazing did. poster. Uh, shout out to whoever put this together. It was absolutely phenomenal. His you excellency. see the capes kind of like flowing in the background there. Yeah, shout yeah. out to His Excellency. Way to go, man. Like, <laughs> this was legit. Okay, and then from here. You know, it wasn't legit. The 45-minute intermission between the oh, co-main event and the main that's event. That's what I was going to say. I didn't – like I, I could do without the concert. <clears throat> you know, Don't and, need it. It was cool. And Shouldn't be in the middle Timothy of the Timothy Bradley – uh, Brett Akimoto and who was the other one? <clears throat> I don't know, but Brett Akimoto could lose my number. But the, the, these guys were struggling, yeah, struggling to, fill the air, dude. to try to fill the the data air. Yeah, and uh, I think that's they're why constantly I like, man. There goes the production, huh? Because it was it was dude. rough. That part was. And rough. they're like they keep switching to like random cameras in like alleyways <laughs> and like <laughs> and like, like, audio, like they're like, well, let's talk to so and so, and then there's just no audio, and you're just like, what's happening? <laughs> but, and, shout out brian said dude it was almost two hours in between them yeah they, wild for sure they do the concert and then they're like all right which i could do without the, the concert yeah same i don't even yeah uk drill rap in saudi arabia is very strange to open with um but maybe it's because tyson fear i don't know but uh josh my buddy josh uh shout out coleslaw he was um coming over for the fight and uh the park fight was just over um Adelaide was like about to fight and he was like, if I leave now, do you think I have time? And I was like, dude, it's boxing, man. Like you're going to yeah, have more time. Than enough time. <laughs> I was like, let me see where they're at. Cause I wasn't watching the up, up you might part be here, until like... then. Yeah. I was at lunch and shit. And like, so then I, I'm like looking, I'm like, there's still one more fight. And then they're talking about a concert. I was like, dude, you got time. And then, cause they were like, yeah, expected walkouts 2 PM Pacific time. And then <laughs> they didn't start their walkouts until like, that was earlier in the day. They said 2 PM. They didn't start their walkouts until like 3 30. Oh an hour God. and a half behind what they expected. <laughs> but the walk were cool. Insane. And, I mean, you had the concerts going on, right? And then, uh, look, the only when, when the drum line came out, with yeah. the amount of celebrities that were there, you had Eminem yeah. there, you had Cristiano Ronaldo there, you had a bunch of boxing legends. Dude, and MMA legends. his excellency did not hold back. He pulled no. out all the stops. I was waiting for Nick Cannon to pull off a mask, dude, you know, and, and it's like, drummer. actually, all, all these drummers are my 20 kids that I have <laughs> <laughs> that I don't raise. <laughs> just new family business. You yeah. know, they just go around. They're just trying oh to earn God. his uh, attention. <laughs> Look, Dad, Jeez, we drum dude. just like you. <laughs> this is going real dark real quick. <laughs> yeah. This oh, yeah. Two fights to and cover. Then, <laughs> in between, they're talking about the fact that His Excellency gifted Francis Ngannou a $4 million car. Yeah. Best Dana could do with a 50k bonus, maybe. And his excellence is <laughs> like wiping his nose with those 50k. Yeah. And dude, the shift knot probably cost 50k. You know what I mean on that yeah. car. Um, yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo gifted him a hundred fifty thousand dollar watch. Dude, that's which quite that's, honestly, his excellency probably bought for Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. to a gift to Ngannou <laughs> just to make him feel welcome. You know? Dude, that's Saudi money, man. That like undocumented oil money that they can just throw around because like who gives it's a fuck? Insane. It's crazy. It's insane. It's crazy. And that's maybe why when everyone's like Francis fumbled the bag. Move the hub of story of the fight to Saudi Arabia, maybe, <laughs> Saudi and Arabia. be like the official spokesperson for yeah. uh for Riyadh season. I don't know. Look, but... his look, we'll never say anything bad about you or Saudi Arabia, uh, except for the fact that um you murdered no, we will we'll never say anything I mean, bad about Saudi Arabia. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but when they when everyone's saying Francis fumbled the bag, all this stuff, um, and then they announced that this fight was going to happen, and that it was happening in Saudi Arabia, and I was, and then they're like, yeah, he's going to make ten million dollars for the purse, and I was like, dude, that's like it's, he's making a lot more than ten. Million. That's just a the purse that they're reporting. Yeah. Yes, 
yeah you know but he has to report on to taxes but there's way more than that (laughs) way more than that 100 (laughs) percent. so all right now walkouts the walkouts right yeah francis and ganu Oh, here's a picture of the weigh-ins real quick, uh, which the, the weigh-ins were okay, right? And I, I love the and fact that they tried to walking. trash talk, but Francis and Ngannou is not very good at trash talk, but there's yeah. a lot of mutual respect. And there's this part where uh, Tyson Fury yeah. is like, look at him, he's fat, which, you know, he's being facetious because yeah. <laughs> he, he's like <laughs> a Greek god. <clears throat> and um, and then Fury, uh, Ngannou says, yeah, but you used to knock people out when you're fat. You still yeah. do. And he goes... Got me there, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was just well, so that, awesome. That was the other thing that, that Francis's team was saying constantly, like that that the Fury team was just so respectful throughout this entire process that it was just like a breath of fresh air. That they were just so there was so much respect between the two. Um mm-hmm. and like everybody was treated fairly. The negotiations were fantastic. Like everything just worked out really well for every, all parties involved. Um awesome. And it yeah, very cool to see after the craziness that that Francis went through and the public scrutiny and all that stuff with the negotiation with the UFC. Really cool to see to see uh, him get treated like this. Um, hilarious! I did see from the face off where uh, John Fury take his shirtless also just fucking large and and they're like doing the stare down and he just like walks in between them and blocks them from the camera. <laughs> he's like in their face <laughs> looking at him and they're like, hey, and they're, like pull him back. It's so dude, funny, dude. I love him, dude. I yeah. love him. Can't get enough John Fury, bro. Get him on camera Seriously. more. But yeah. uh, okay, so now the walk except for post fight, Francis did not want to be on camera post fight. Oh, I bet. This shot was so Look sick. at this. Such a good shot here, dude. You just see his silhouette with the crown on. And I love how they carried the theme from the poster yeah, over same. to the walkouts. It was just so perfect, man. He has the, the nice, uh, what would you call that, robe, I guess, right? Robe. With the crown. Yeah. He walks out. And uh, who else but Mike Tyson would be the one that grabs the crown yeah. and lifts it off his head. And I was like, oh, my God, Dude, this he, is so Mike good. Mike Tyson takes the crown off. Nick Sick and Dewey Cooper take the rope. He just puts his arms out. They take the robe off of him. Like He's sitting in the – but when Buffer's announcing him, he's sitting in a throne with his – and he's just fucking with his gloves on, just leaning back. He stands up, takes his arms out like this. Nick Sick and Dewey Cooper take the robe off. Mike Tyson walks over, takes the crown off of him. It, it was fucking awesome, dude. So good. It and so, so cool. In my head, I'm thinking, how do you top this, man? Like, good luck, Tyson Fury. Like, yeah, how, yeah. like I know you had some good walkouts, but this was legit. And then they pan over to the picture of Tyson Fury. They're yeah. putting his crown on in the back. I was like, dude, his crown's, his crown's legit crown. too. It's he has a cooler, cooler crown. crown, not going to lie, right? It, it has more spikes or whatever those are called. <laughs> The more spikes, the better. You know what they yeah. say on your crowns. And so <laughs> you, you see his outfit. And as he's walking out the tunnel. Oh, dude, how cool is that? Rows upon rows of boxing greats, boxing legends. Pacquiao, De La Hoya, Lennox Lewis, Holyfield. And he's fist bumping Durant, each of them as he walks Sugar down. Sugar Ray like, Leonard. So cool, man. It was amazing. Did you see Lennox Lewis block the cameraman? What was that about? Oh, was that Lennox Lewis? Yeah, so oh, funny. He just stands, steps in front. He's like, "Nah." It's like, "What?" <laughs> imagine, imagine you're a camera guy and Lennox like, Lewis. I'm a part of Fury's team, bro. What are you talking yeah. about? Come on. And then he comes out. It's a pretty woman. Yeah. Well, Dude. also when he's sitting in the crown and the they they have the guy. It's like a movie trailer. And like husband to a nagging wife. And you're yeah. like, what? Father to, to five squealing children. Seven squealing children. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> It was so oh, awesome. And then they play Pretty Woman and he just jogs around the stage that the concert just used. <laughs> You're like, what Only Tyson Fury can get away with that. Yeah. Only Tyson Fury can get away with that, dude. And yeah. I, it's crazy because I – they play I, Jolene at one point? I think they played yes, Jolene right, at one right point. Right before he started walking out, it was Jolene. Yeah. It's like, so dude, sick, you got to love it. It's freaking Tyson yeah. Fury. That's the Gypsy King for you. And so I, I'm torn, man, because I've always been a big Tyson Fury fan. Same. I love Tyson I Fury. Gypsy King shirt, but you got to rip yeah. the MMA boys. And that's the thing. But at the same time, knowing everything that Francis has gone through, how it is that the UFC cut ties with him, mm-hmm. I wanted him to win so bad. You know, me too, dude. So too. watching Tyson Fury, I'm like, God, I love this guy. And then I'm like, but he's fighting in Ghana. Like, what? Yeah. Oh, how cool too. So so Francis is walking out. Dewey Cooper, Nick Sick. Uh, Mike Tyson, and then as he's doing the walkout, 
Kamaru Usman and Izzy join his walkout. Like it was just so cool to see. Like he's got his boys with him. Like it's just so cool to see that. I, and I and you that. saw like you saw the representation of MMA all together. Yeah, right. 100%. When you see and Dewey, you see Nixick, you see like you said Usman and Izzy, and mm-hmm. then when Fury was walking out, and we we mentioned all the legends. It's like he's representing yeah. boxing, and all the legends are like, "Hey, man, you're going out there." And you're going to mm-hmm. prove that nobody could beat a boxer, right? Yeah, and this is this is a great breath of fresh air because people are like, oh, these MMA crossover boxing events. This is very different because this is the UFC champion versus the lineal heavyweight champion. This isn't a already retired Nate Diaz fighting up two weight classes against Jake yes. Paul. This isn't a retired for four years Anderson Silva fighting Jake Paul. It's so different. This isn't Ben Askren, a wrestler with a hip replacement fighting. It's just different, you know? Yes. This is the actual MMA versus boxing in a boxing match, you know? Like, yes. You better than Francis they've ever done, in my opinion. Who some could say is in his prime, and especially at that weight class, man, you know that they can continue going until a later age. And then Tyson Fury yeah. uh, still in his prime, and you're just like, oh, my Undefeated. God, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Well, and so, yeah, and then, real quick, yeah, Francis, very much, I, w- I would agree with you. But let's not forget, two years out of fighting with an ACL and an MCL replacement, and he's 37 years old. So it was like lots of question marks. I was telling Josh, like when this fight starts, it's going to be interesting to see Francis' footwork and how light he is on his feet because we haven't seen him post ACL surgery. Yeah, and he's been out of the, he's been at, he hasn't fought for two years. And, and let's be real, the, the footwork in boxing probably less taxing on the MCL and ACL than grappling True. and doing all that yeah. other stuff in MMA, right? So. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, Probably the best move Francis could have made is start getting into boxing. But honestly, if he <laughs> yeah. wants to prolong his career. Um, but yeah, okay. So you want to get into the fight itself? Let's do it. All Let's right. So first round, your boy here is a little concerned. Okay. Because <laughs> there, there's a bit of hesitancy from Nganu, uh, And I, I felt like he was having a little bit of a hard time getting inside and finding his good range. Right? Yeah. One thing I did tell Josh, he was throwing when they were when they were both orthodox, he was throwing that jab to the body. And I mm. was like, ooh, that's a good move. I like that from Francis because, you know, I was like, that that sets up the left hook up top. <laughs> and I, was, yeah. I said that in the first round. I was like, I was like, uh, that's nice from Francis because like we don't see too much nuance from Francis in in his previous like MMA fights, striking wise, you know, uh, he's never really needed any nuance or anything. He never really needed to set yeah. anything up, you know? I mean, um, dude, just, the thing I think about Francis is Rosenstruck. I always go back to that one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Where he's just running at him, swinging these We're both going to hit makers. each other, but I'm going to hit you harder. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, you're not going to hurt me. Uh, yeah. But I'm going to hurt you. But so to see him jab to the body, I was like, that's nice because that's setting things up. This is what you, you're going to have to do, you know? Um, I liked that. Second round was actually a pretty close round, in my opinion. Round two was pretty close. I probably gave it to Fury, uh, just like I did the first round. And I was scoring. I started scoring this uh, after the third round. I wasn't going to bother scoring it until after the third round. But um, when the third round happened, I was like, oh, time to start scoring. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But uh, the second round I thought was actually pretty close. um, But I ended up giving the first two rounds to Fury just because I was like, when I do score this, I'm going to score this like as if I'm a boxing judge. I want to see like what i think they would they would uh choose right so i was yeah. like it's a close round uh fury started landing some uh francis started landing some power punches in that second round and i was like okay this is he's doing better than i thought he was he, uh you know what he did really well was fury would switch to southpaw uh or to orthodox and then francis would switch stances uh and that like he was matching the stance switches which i don't think fury expected even yeah. though it's like switching stances is so much more common in MMA than it is in boxing. Um, a lot of MMA fighters switch stances to either set up takedowns, set up their rear leg kick, set up um, like shifting punches, things like that. Um, it's much more common because you can get away with in, in boxing. You can't really get away with lackluster defense from one side. MMA yeah. you kind of can because there's it's so dynamic that um, defense goes out the window a little bit more in MMA than it does in boxing. So. MMA fighters are much more uh, willing to switch stances and learn another stance where in boxing, it's like, no, if I switch stances, my defense is lacking. I'll get fucking ripped, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't think he was expecting Francis to switch stances so willingly. Um, I think that kind of confused him. 
But that was cool from Francis. And whenever he would switch, he did such a good job of making sure that his lead foot was on the outside, giving him the best the angles. Look at the yeah. timing on this picture. I know. Money. Because when you're open stance like this, orthodox versus southpaw, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to step past or outside their lead leg because it lines up the left hand like that. From yep. if, In this picture, if you're Francis, it's perfect that your foot's on the outside because look at his left hand. It's now, this is something that Tyson was doing a really good job, job of too, though, uh, is when he'd throw the jab, sometimes he wouldn't aim for the face. He would go straight for the shoulder or straight for the yeah. body, make sure that he was maintaining that distance, right? So he's still landing a quick shot to the body, but you could see Ngannou was reaching a little bit more at that point because he felt like he yeah. kept on getting shoved back, uh, which was it. really good. Yes, yeah. yes. Then comes the third round. Doggy. Oh my god. And so a couple of things that I had noticed by this point. One, Ngannou has a freaking chin on him, man. Because there's a couple shots that Fury Shit. had landed in the first and second that you're like, man, I don't know who else would have been able to Dude. eat those that well. Yeah, because he throws that uh when he's orthodox, throws that left hook as like a paw to pull your hand down, and then yep. he throws the right hand oh. right behind it, and he landed that perfectly. Yep. Yep. perfectly <laughs> and then Ganu brushed it off he's like you think that's gonna take me out bro i'm from the yeah. sand mines in cameroon okay yeah and so he, he just squares up again and then at this point i think fury's feeling himself a little bit because he was landing those shots he was having and gonna have a hard time uh you know closing the distance boxing. so he comes in with you mentioned the left right yeah okay gets a little sloppy uh guard down right he doesn't keep the right hand up as he's throwing the left and vice versa and so he just mm -hmm. goes Bat, bat, tries to do it real quick, leaves himself wide open. And Francis comes in with that left hook that hits him right behind in the head right here. Well, oh, dude. hold on. Fury said at post fight, yeah, he was glancing shot behind the head. No, no, no. No. It was right above and right behind the ear. Perfectly legal shot. Yeah, boy made it placed. rain yeah, with his dude. sweat. He hit him it so hard. Beautiful. It was beautiful. And that's what he was yeah. setting up the whole time with that jab to the body. I think he got a little – also, let's just go through these pictures real quick because it was fucking awesome the way he drops him and then he comes over to him and, like, yells at him real quick. And uh, it was fucking awesome to see him get that moment because that alone, that's the win. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses at this point. You know what I mean? Like, yep. the, official, the official decision doesn't matter anymore. This was – because the whole lead-up was he hits so hard, but – does he have the delivery system to which apply to which to apply the power? Yes, he does. That left yeah. hook landed. He delivered and it. Can he and hit dropped him. Tyson Fury, who has great defense. You know, yeah. I, I've seen so many Some videos. Of I was like in the Matrix, dude, where he's like moving up and down, and they're just throwing everything bit. at him. So good. Let, let's, uh, Rich. I'm going to share my screen really quick so we can see this knockdown. Ooh! Shout out to whoever uh, was ringside, His Excellency, maybe. Ooh. Oh wow! Come on, dude. Hey, no, but <laughs> that other angle where he looks over at Francis and he goes, Ooh. Yeah, dude. Like, like, yeah. Like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that was solid. That was a good shot. He that heard him, awesome, man. Dude. And props to Francis for, or to Fury to getting up. Fury's um, recovery is, is uh, legitimately is legendary. It's legendary Second recovery. Enough. People when don't he get was up knocked out Francis. against Wilder, like out, yeah. out. Eyes exactly. rolling behind the back of his head, right? And it's like there. he he has that the KO breathing. You know what I mean? When he's yeah. like, <sighs> yeah, where your body's like an autopilot. Mm -hmm. And when you see him like turn, like oh my god, he just sits up like the under, uh, Undertaker. Yeah. He gets back up and he's like bouncing up and down. And then he wins the rest of the round against yeah. Wilder. Come Crazy, on, crazy dude. dude. Oh wait, this is also a good one. This is uh they had they had a video on um. Uh, Usyk, who is K uh, ringside, uh, oh. his, his reaction to the knockdown. When he got knocked down? Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> He's like, all my, my future money. My payday, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he looks concerned. Yeah, dude. He looks legitimately concerned. And that chick that's next to him, she's like, hey, you're still going to get that bag, right? And he's like, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like that's kind okay. of okay. Uh... <laughs> so we we know at this point. Hey, we we got something on our hands here. We, I grabbed got... I grabbed a a piece of spam mail and a pen and started scoring. And I was like, all right, let's just give first two rounds to Fury. That's a ten eight round for Francis. Here we go. And now oh, now it starts to matter a little bit. <laughs> all right, and then from there, um, I I saw Tyson clinching a lot more. A lot more. Yeah. After that that third round. Uh, there it is right there. And he was That's doing something different. where 
where he didn't want to get so close to, to Nganu anymore. So he was throwing from the outside, and he yeah. finishes right and goes straight to the clinch from there. They call it a casting punch. Something that yeah. Fedor, Fedor and Islam Makhachev use really, really well because you can use it to set up trips. Uh, but in boxing, you can use it to survive. <laughs> yes. And, oh, by the way, this is a perfect timing on this uh, picture too, Rich. Uh, Nganu did such a good job. And this is how he cut up Fury, actually, is when Fury would clinch, Nganu, mm-hmm. instead of just accepting the clinch, would shove, 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 keep yep. one arm shoving and use the right Damn. Dude, it was to land some shots or frame with the right. And he landed that left uppercut that like hit him right on yeah. the eye that cut him. And I was like, God damn, Ngannou, what a beautiful plan well, on that, man. Yeah, because Fury, so many of his fights, he will clinch and he'll pressure you and you break he'll your posture. It's exhausting. And he'll he, you know, he's him. so heavy. Yeah, he'll bully you. He's so heavy. You carry his weight. People make fun of the Wilder thing for the walkout excuse with the with the weight of the of the armor thing that he wore, but but it's it was probably just because Fury was fucking pressuring him so hard in the clinch because he's so massive, you know, he's six yep. foot nine, he's like two hundred seventy pounds, he's he's hanging on you, you're carrying him, but Francis is used to that, he's used to grappling against the cage, he's used to all that stuff. He works with Nick Sick, you don't think he he pummels on the fence? He's used to that, and he's and he did a great job of not holding the back of the head to land the uppercuts because it's like with a single collar tie uh like it was mma because it's illegal right in boxing but he would frame on him and just hold just like here he'd he'd have him in the, it's the crook of his neck to be able to maintain the distance and and land that uppercut and it was beautiful and you could see that's not a safe spot for fury anymore and nope. sometimes he would reach in and francis was like landing just like pawing hooks on him as he's like trying to enter the clinch and it was it was really cool to see dude really cool to see it was beautiful, man. And look, even in this picture, you see Fury's having to pay whenever yeah. he would clinch a little bit, you know, which was, again, beautiful game plan. Dude, uh, fifth his round, leg at one point. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Grant's like, what are you doing, dude? Come on. He's like, dude, I fought Stipe twice. <laughs> uh, so fifth round comes around. I'm starting to get a little worried here because that jab starts landing yeah. for Fury. He looks well, really light the, on his feet. The, the fourth round after the knockdown – you can see Fury goes back to the Philly shell. He's twitching that shoulder, uh, and he has that left hand, uh, the, the rear hand. Sorry, it's, it's usually his right hand, but um, he has the rear hand tucked, blocking the liver punch, and uh, and that and he's twitching his his chin over to his shoulder, and you start to see that jitteriness from from Fury that he normally has that he didn't have at the beginning of this fight because I don't think he mm-hmm. felt like he needed it. And then after that knockdown, he's like, "All right, time to start boxing." And he won the next few rounds, in my opinion, after the knockdown. Yeah because um, he really started boxing well you know yes now then, this was very interesting for me uh quick thing and i don't know if i'm going to skip over what you're going to say but eighth round uh going into the eighth round they're talking about compu box uh showing close to even yeah going and, into and the, the eighth odds, round and the odds flipped fury at one point was a plus 100 and i was like where's my phone how do i start putting money on this because there's no way fury's gonna lose a decision in this fight He's a plus. He's he's got plus money. I need to put some money on him. Didn't do it because uh, I never do. Uh, Blunderbub says I wouldn't tell him to his face, but Fury got little legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but dude, uh, I thought uh, Francis. I think it was rounds like six, seven, and eight. I thought he was winning. You know, Fury looked like he was just trying to clinch. Francis was was making him pay for it. And I was like, dude, this is the turning point because if uh, at that point. I think towards the ninth, I think I was like, okay, Francis needs nine and 10, I think, to make this five versus five, and but with a 10-8 round, so he would get the win. Um, but then I think the ninth round, he really took it off, and, and Fury was able to start picking him apart again with the jab uh, after, after I thought Francis won a few rounds in a row. And then, uh, yeah, Fury, Fury really looked good in the ninth round. Uh, Francis didn't do much. And then the 10th round, um, you know, it was very close. One of the judges actually gave the 10th round to Francis. I probably, I leaned fury for that 10th round. Um, mm. <clears throat> but by that point, the commentary team was fully won over by Francis. Pro and gone. So <laughs> proud of him, dude. They were like, I've never seen anything like this. He's 37 years old. He's two years out of a fight. He's never boxed before in his life. He's taking on the lineal heavyweight champion in, in, of, of the world. And and he's arguably winning. The odds flipped. He knocked him down. And he's won multiple rounds against him. And we're now in the final round. Nobody thought it would go 10. That's like all they were talking about in that 10th round. It was insane to watch. It was so cool. 
and they're showing people in the crowd and they're just like the fuck did we just watch yeah you know? like it was incredible and then they went to the decision and i was like there's no way they give it to francis i think we talked uh, about this right we, we talked yeah. about like hey if this goes to a decision uh, it, they're gonna figure out a way to get this to fury and look yeah it's not us being some crazy conspiracy theorist or anything like that but we know boxing yeah. boxing look, is I just known it. Yeah, I, I, I judged it for, uh, I, like I said, I judged it how I thought the boxing judges would score it. Um, and I ended up with 96-93 Fury. Everyone's saying, that's a robbery. One of the judges gave him 96-93. That's bullshit. It's not. It's very, you could you could easily give him 96-93. Um, and that's someone who- Would you have been happy with the draw? Uh, I, I would have. I would have. I think you could argue that this was uh, six rounds for Fury and then with a 10-8 round for, for Francis- um one judge gave it to francis when when that happened one judge gave it to francis i was like i feel like they think francis won but because it's boxing they're not going to give it to him but they'll give him one scorecard just to like be like good job you yeah <laughs> good job dude <laughs> <laughs> you did it so in way this better picture, than the reason i had this last picture there of fury you could see it man he was wearing it on his face man you can't really see the cut on there either but dude, the, swelling was was big. the swelling was big i'm sure today it, it looks a lot worse right uh, so, and I've seen plenty of Tyson Fury fights where after the fight, he's holding his arms he's, up, he's singing, you know, sticking his tongue he out, he's shaking song. it, he's singing, he's doing all these things. And you're like, man, he's feeling himself. He had such a dominant performance in this one. He didn't seem too confident, man. And even no. after he was, uh, named the victor, he, he wasn't bouncing around like his normal self. You know what I mean? So, no, it was different. <laughs> and for sure. Look. They do the face off with with uh, with Usyk in there. Everybody wants to talk to Francis. Everybody's asking Francis how he felt about what he just did, what he accomplished. It was literally all about like, dude, you just fucking did it. You did it, and he might have lost this fight, uh, but he definitely secured a rematch if they want to do it again, uh, which oh, will yeah. make way more money than he did this time. Um, and you know, it's. It's telling that they can't top rank canceled the uh, Fury press conference after <laughs> after the fight. They canceled the press conference. It's pretty telling. It's uh, pretty telling. Absolutely. There's a, there's a video of a reporter talking to Looking John. Looking gone, by the way. Looking into yeah. the crowd. Dude, he did it. He did it. Uh, Everything so, that everybody said he couldn't moment. do, he did it. Uh, John Fury. They're talking to him outside of the arena as he's getting into his car. And they're like, what do you think about the fight? Did Francis uh, surprise you? And he's like, yeah, he's way tougher than I thought he was. Uh, he, he hits so hard. But what about what about the Gypsy King's ability to get up? What about that? He gets he gets hit by the hardest hardest punches that anyone's ever seen. He continues to get up. I think that's special. And then he got in the car and left. <laughs> it's like, Please. ooh. All he could say was that he got up. Yeah. Look, Fury probably won that fight. I don't think it was a robbery. Um, I, I need to rewatch it. But I think I – think, uh, But Fury who really it. won? Yeah. But but that's the thing. Francis won. Did yes. It. And it's Everybody crazy for us to say that because we, we say that there's no moral victories, right? But in this one here, man, he Shit. got the bag. Got the bag. He he showed all the naysayers that he could do it. Mm -hmm. Going into this, uh, he was, a, I, I think, a plus 700 with Fury plus being a minus 1,400, was it? Yeah. Massive and they flipped underdog. the odds at one point. They flipped the odds at the end of the fight. In like the eighth round, they flipped the odds. Not early when he dropped them. At the end of the fight, people thought he was winning. That's what that's what that means. It's Amazing. incredible. Amazing. Um, incredible. Best boxing performance by any MMA athlete in a crossover. It's not even close. Not even. And he close, did it right? against. He did it against one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. And look. We do have Anderson Silva that went up against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., where he put he on a good. pretty good performance. Very but good. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is no Tyson Fury. <laughs> no, he's not. There's only one you know? Tyson Fury. That's he likes there is. There's only Look. one. Dude, <laughs> it's so good. I love And Tyson I'm a Fury. big Tyson Fury fan. I'm a huge, too. I'm a massive Tyson Fury fan. Um, I know people are disrespect. They don't like that he's, that he's ducking music, all this shit. Look, come on. What are we doing? It's going to happen. Um, they're gonna fight, but they're gonna fight. There's way too much money, but yeah, I'm just so happy for Francis, dude. Everybody that doubted him, everybody that said he wanted easy fights, everyone that said that Tyson would never fight him, and then when they did announce it, it was oh, Tyson's gonna light him up. He's gonna beat him worse than he's gonna make him look worse than Wilder in the second fight. All this stuff. Here he is dropping him. Never even got hurt in the fight mm -hmm. against. I mean, it was just incredible. It was look. 
he didn't get the win, but look on. I'm getting goosebumps right now just Dude, thinking about it, man. Can- Canelo posted just a shocked emoji face. That's all he posted. There's other boxers who were posting that that Francis won. Like, dude, it, this was big. Fuck top it. Rank- Canelo versus Ngannou. Next. <laughs> Let's do top, it. Top rank canceled the press conference. They yeah. canceled the press conference. His Excellency allowed that? You kidding me? You know why? Because all Ngannou? the questions were going to be about Ngannou. Yep. You know, yep. It, none of it was going to be like, hey, matchful performance, blah, blah, blah. It was going to be like, yo, do you feel like you won that fight? <laughs> yeah, dude. That's hey, how man. All the questions were going to be. <laughs> You yeah. know, uh, and then on top of that, you have the the fight against Usyk already scheduled in a couple of months yep. in uh, Riyadh, right? In the exact yep. same uh, arena. I wonder if they're going to do another concert and stuff. Yeah, who knows? That fight doesn't seem as big. It doesn't now, right? But and and it should be because Usyk is like a fucking killer. He's a champion. He's going up. He went up in weight class. He's he fucking like this is a big deal. It's a big fight. Doesn't feel as big. This is crazy. Maybe it's just and, recency and, bias. It's just the aftermath of this fight, you know. But like, but God but maybe damn. they were like, "Hey, a press conference won't help us. It won't help us. It won't <laughs> yeah, help that fight. It won't help sell that yeah, fight right true. now, you know, because none of it's going to be like, hey, now that you ran through Ngannou, the baddest man on the planet, what do you think about Usa coming up? It that none of that's going to happen. Yeah, all of it yep. was going to be focused around your ass almost lost to Ngannou. Yeah, how do you and, feel uh, about that? W- WBC has officially ranked Francis Ngannou. He's in the top ten now. Off of one boxing fight, one boxing Doggy. fight. It's, it's off to the races. 10, it's off oh, to the races. And PFL give me is, Wilder versus Ngannou, dude. Yeah, and PFL's hyped now. Because give me Andy Ruiz versus Ngannou. Give yeah, me dude, all these on, fights. Dude. Toss and, and, them in there, dude. And and Francis is talking about. He's like, I'm so proud and happy that the PFL let me do this. And he, and he's saying that his next fight will be in the PFL. Everyone's like, Oh, Francis is just gonna box now. PFL's about to get left in the dust. Nah. Francis just he said post fight uh, in the locker room with Brett Okamoto that he, he's going to fight his next fight in PFL and then probably box after that and he's well, like he this is what in I want. Company now, right? Exactly, dude. You don't think this is massive for PFL? Oh, P- dude. Francis can fight anybody now for his next fight in the PFL. Everybody's watching. Everybody's watching after this. He yeah. brought over boxing fans. He just yeah. bought. He just he just got boxing fans to now tune into the next PFL. You know that's a really good point because even. Even if you're not huge into MMA and you mm-hmm. hear about the monster of Francis yeah. Ngannou and what he did in mixed martial arts, you're probably going to now say like, well, let me see what they were talking about. Right? Like yeah. he did really good against the Gypsy King. Let me see how well he does inside and the that, octa. That is how the UFC fumbled this bag because mm-hmm. they could have let this fight happen. If it happened like this, the next pay-per-view that the UFC does with Francis Ngannou after Massive. this fight is close to UFC 229. Was it 229? Yeah. That was uh, Connor versus Habib. Um, whatever that event was. Um, you know, they, they. I get it. They don't want stars to become too big for the UFC because then they can't control them, just like with Connor. But here we are, like, you know, if, if they let this happen, look, Connor versus Habib, it was so big. Part of that was because he went and boxed Floyd Mayweather and then came back. That mm-hmm. was his return fight, um, from what I remember, at least. Um, Francis fighting Tyson Fury, looking this good, dropping him, and then coming back. Dana could, dude, could you imagine if Dana was still promoting Francis, what he'd be saying about this fight? He'd oh, be yeah. Like, no, they'd be like, they fucking robbed him. Boxing did it again. Everybody knows Francis won that fight. Everybody knows Francis is the best fighter on the planet, the best heavyweight in the world. And we got him fighting John Jones next. Imagine what that pay per view would do. But they, uh, Blunderbuff says, uh, maybe he'll use all this new influence to make PFL allow elbows. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll, yeah. we'll get there well, one day. Well, they'll do. Francis isn't fighting in a tournament. He's in fight. He's fighting in their super fight division. So yeah. um, they don't need to outlaw elbows. So they might even allow elbows for the, for that division. We'll see what happens. What they do, but um, the only reason they don't allow the elbows is because the tournament. But Francis isn't fighting in no tournament. That's not. Hey, how about happen. that elbow that Fury landed though? I know. And he but just, comes he, over the top, and then he misses, yeah. and he just finishes up with the elbow right on on the side of his temple, and then yeah, and and is like doesn't oh. even react to it. Yeah. He's like. <laughs> Beautiful. Just wipes it off real quick. And that was what everybody was saying. They were like, Francis is going to, he's sloppy. He doesn't have the technique. He's going to land illegal shots on accident, all this stuff. And then it's Fury that lands an elbow. And then when they show the replay, the commentators were like, oh my God, Fury lands an elbow. Like they were fully on Francis' <laughs> side at that point. It was so cool to watch, dude. Because it was. His whole life has been proving doubters wrong. And to watch it unfold mid fight like that was just so cool to see. You know, it was just like, it was just like a, 
condensed version of his entire life was that commentary. It was so cool. So and then cool. uh, on my notes at the very end, man, the very last thing that I wrote down was, how can you not love Ngannou? How can you not? Right. And everyone's like, dude, I, I mean, I keep going back to the fact that if he had this fight, the level of promotion that the UFC could put onto him, and you know Dana would be talking so much shit about boxing and propping up Francis and then lining him up to fight John Jones, and it would have been so big, but they fucked it up, and now we don't get that. And the fact that all this happened the same week that John Jones tears his peck off the fucking bone and and he, they have to cancel Steve Bay versus John Jones, which is like the GOAT versus the heavyweight GOAT, even though the heavyweight GOAT's 50 years old and hasn't fought for three years and lost to Francis. The fact that that fight just got canceled the same week that Francis goes out to Saudi Arabia, knocks down Tyson Fury, and wins the hearts of everybody yeah. is fucking never bet against man. Francis Ngani. You know Love what I mean? that guy. Love him. Props Unless to Francis and Ghana. Might definitely bet against him because he lost, but <laughs> oh, Rich got pulled up a clip. Oh, wh- what's this? What? You really, this? really can. You just won't. And uh Francis definitely gets nominated for the <laughs> Shut up, of the Year Award. I disagree. He's about to make a shit ton of money more than anybody in UFC history, really. Um, I think uh I think the Tyson UFC's Fury. yeah, he's gonna fight, he's definitely gonna fight Tyson Fury. He's definitely gonna lose that fight. But it won't matter because he's going to make more in that one fight than he would have for the rest of his UFC career combined, most likely. Damn, wow. Look at that, dude. That look at that. So ago. Rich, our producer, Rich left. Casual, uh, goes through and finds the cliff of uh, when we were talking about Francis leaving. Uh, and you were spot on, Will. Spot on. Very nice, man. All right. Well, hey, I know that we said this was going to be a quick episode because we're only covering two fights. And yeah, we are now minutes 46 in. minutes in. <laughs> There's just so much to cover oh, on this man. fight, man. Uh, and Gondi, man, just made the entire MMA community so proud. Uh, yeah. And I feel like there was millions of, of people that felt like a mom or a dad watching their kids yeah, just dude. flourish, right, <laughs> under the lights. Couldn't have gone uh, – oh. well, could have gone better if he would have won, right? But it, it's still a huge victory for, yeah. uh, for Ngano. How How proud do you think Mike Tyson is too? Oh, man. man. So proud. Dude, how hurt – do you think – Tyson Fury was, did you see that part of the interview? He's like, man, you know, it's just not going to lie. It kind of hurts. Like I'm named after the guy and here he is in the opposite corner uh, (laughs) training somebody to beat me. And I was like, damn, like you can feel it, dude. You know, like, you know that that meant something to Tyson Fury as well. But uh, here we are. We're going back all the way back now to the. (laughs) The (laughs) pre-fight. Yeah. (laughs) It was just so good, dude. Uh, Everybody says, everybody says like, oh, MMA fighters going over to boxing. It's so embarrassing for MMA, all this stuff. Not this time. This overshadows everything previously. 100%. Everything previously. Connor sure. was there and he's talking up Francis. And like he, he's all like, Yeah. Uh like Okamoto asked Connor, like, oh, what 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 advice would you give him? Uh and he's like, you know what? He's like, just go for it. Try to kill him early. I was focused about the late rounds. Uh I feel like I held myself back in those early rounds that I landed a good shot early in the fight, but I, I tried to stay too composed because I, was too, I was too busy thinking. Yeah, he's like, I was too busy thinking about how many rounds there were that I didn't want to gas myself out, and I should have. And he's like, if I could tell Francis anything, it would just be that. Um, who knows if that's good advice or not, but to see him championing Francis after he left the UFC and stuff, is it was cool to see. It was you awesome, know? for sure. It was cool. All right, that's it for that fight. 